Hi everybody, here's Christian from Team Workcast. Now I'm here with a new video from our How Do I Podcast series. Today I'm gonna be talking about how to post process video, especially real world footage. Uh, this is going to be a video pertaining to our Netrunner videos, how to um, post process the kind of raw footage that you get when you record card games, especially Netrunner. But of course you can also apply these skills to board games or any type of other card game like Magic the Gathering and whatever. So we are going to be looking at two types of programs. We're going to be looking at this program I have open right now, which is After Effects. Uh, but then later on, I'm going to look at Premiere, which is the two types of programs I'm using personally in my in my work. Uh, but a lot of the techniques and skills and filters that we're talking about today are also applicable to, uh, to other types of uh, software packages. So even if you're not working with those two types of programs, uh, it still might be worth watching and, and looking at the actual process. So we're going to be going through a four step process to, to process this footage. The first step is going to be look, uh, looking at cropping, making sure that, you know, the framing of the, of the footage is perfect. And then we're going to be looking at brightness and contrast, making sure, you know, the brightness levels are perfect. Uh, then we're going to be looking at the tint, at kind of, kind of the color settings, making sure there's like no color bias in the footage. And finally, we're going to be looking at sharpness. We're going to introduce the sharpness losing, using a very simple filter. All right, so this is After Effects. And I'm gonna, uh, because this is the first video that, that is about post processing, I'm gonna actually do a bit of an introduction to how After Effects works. So here on, on, on the left side, we have the project window. This is basically like a, like a box where we put all of our, our footage in that we got. And also this is where our other composition is going to be in. So we're gonna put in just drag and drop in our footage in here. And this is recorded with a GH2. Uh, with a, a Lumix GH2, and we are going to try to make to look make this look a little bit better here. Um, this is just raw footage right now, so first we have to create like a new composition, uh, which is kind of like you know like a timeline that you can uh, use to edit uh, those videos in. I'm gonna create a right click and click on a new composition, and this is now the first part where things can go wrong. So I really want you to pay attention to this, even if you're maybe already familiar with this, uh, which is you have to set the resolution to the right numbers here. I'm using 1080p, I'm working in 1080p, uh, and I'm setting this to 1 uh, 920 width and 1080 height. And of course, down here, the frame rate has to be set to 30 frames per second. Uh, 29.97 frames per second, something you can see sometimes, which is also fine. Uh, but this is basically like kind of like the standard 1080p uh, workspace. Uh, you can also work with 720p, which is also popular right, right now. A bit lower resolution can, might be worthwhile for slower PCs if you don't have like the newest PC. In this case, you would set it to uh, 1280, wait a minute, 80 width and 720 height. And then of course, height, not height. Uh, and of course the frame, frame rate is going to be at 30 frames per second still. Uh, but again, I like to work in 1080p and I would recommend you to work in 1080p even if you are your um, like camera doesn't record in 1080p because uh, having the footage in the 1080p, uploading in 1080p to, to uh, YouTube will ensure that you will retain the best quality once YouTube compresses the video and, and uh, makes it available to other people. Another thing to to look at in this window is basically here down here the durations. It's set to one hour and twenty two minutes. That's probably enough workspace to work with this video. If this is like you know just five minutes, you probably have to make it a bit longer so the entire video fits in your composition. We're gonna later on adjust the length of the composition so it fits our video. All right, I'm gonna click OK, and so we have our comp one here, and this is basically an empty composition right now. We're just gonna drag and drop this video in here, and there we go. We have our video. And you can see like this little bar is the actual video and you can see that this is much, uh, it's just 30 minutes long and we have like a two hour video. So this is now where we're gonna like adjust the length of our composition to fit to match the video that we just dragged in here. Uh, and there is like this work area that we can redefine by dragging this um, this kind of like little yellow thing here at the end, whoops. So we can gonna actually uh, move both of those and we're gonna uh, keep pressing the shift button so they snap to the ends of those videos. Uh, so now we have to redefine the work area and now up here we can set a trim composition to work area. So now that we, the length of the composition is redefined 
uh, to match the work area that we previously established. So now we have a situation where we have composition that fits perfectly um, the length of our video. So this is now where we are going to apply our four step process. First, we're going to deal with the cropping. We're going to make sure that everything is aligned properly here. As you can see, there's like a lot of chips and, and Coca-Cola and all that stuff visible in the, in the top part of the picture. And we don't really need that kind of stuff. So um, we're going to actually go here. We're going to open like this little arrow here. Trend, we're going to open here transform. And here you can control the transform of the footage. So if you can scale things you can rotate things and you can move things around um, I'm gonna actually un undo all those things now <laughs> um, so the things that are that are interesting for us right now is to zoom in and every time there's like a yellow number here in After Effects you can just hold your mouse button on, on top of it and move it left and right and you can like adjust it with your with by dragging left to right so we're gonna zoom in quite a little bit here and then we're gonna move this a little bit up here so we kind of have this centered and uh, we we have kind of have to, have to watch out that there, we don't cut off some important cards here on the side here. Uh, but it seems to be aligned right now, right, pretty nice here right now. So I'm going to go through the entire footage actually right now and to see if everything that actually happens on the, on the playing field is visible in the frame. But it looks really nice here. So now we cut off the top of the part of the, of the video and we have made sure that, um, that what, what actually happens, the actual playing field is in focus, is in center of the video. And I, this is very important. I want, want to emphasize this because I see a lot of people not caring uh, much about, um, about the framing. I think it is very important to make those videos much more real, much more, um, more pleasant to watch. So this was the first step of our process. Now we're gonna go to more complicated stuff. Now we're gonna look at the exposure, basically the uh, brightness and contrast settings. In order to do that, we're gonna create a new um, adjustment layer, which you can get in uh, on, under the um, in the menu under new layer, new and um, adjustment layer. So an adjustment layer is basically like a layer and every effect that you put on this layer is going to trickle down and is going to be applied to all of the layers underneath. And this, in this case, we only have one layer underneath, which is our video. The reason why we want to have this adjustment layer is basically so that we can like s duplicate later on this composition and be able to quickly exchange the video with our videos. So if we want to apply the same effects on all of the videos that we have like from a tournament, then this is like a very quick way to um, to apply the same effects to, to multiple videos. Um, all right, so we have our adjustment layer and now we're going to start applying effects to it. So on the top here next to the project window, I have like the effect controls panel. I'm going to switch over to effect control panel. And then by right clicking right here, or I alternatively can also look uh, in the effect and presets, presets window for this, I can start applying effects to this. So let me just look for levels. Le oops, level, oops. I should be able to spell this. There we go, levels. So we have color collection levels. You can just drag and drop in, into this window. And then we have applied levels here. You can alternatively just right click and glow, go to coro, color collect color correction, there we go, and click on levels, that's basically the same effect. So levels, I think, is a very, very important tool that you should be able to, you should really master, because this is really crucial to understand how how um, how you can post-process those videos. Uh, what you see is like this little mountain range here in the middle, and a bunch of arrows outside of this. So if you are maybe familiar already with something like um, digital photography, you sometimes have this kind of thing. It's called a histogram. It's basically a statistic about the brightness of the pixels in your video. So on the left, we have the dark uh, pixels. On the right, we have the bright pixels. And the kind of like the mountain range shows you kind of the distribution for the pixels along the different brightnesses. So we see that kind of like in the middle, a little bit in, in a darker area, we have like a peak. And uh, you can see them trailing, trailing off uh, in the, on the bright side. There's a concentration of pixels more on the dark side here right now. Um, so we can use those arrows here now to redefine what means dark and what means bright in this video. So for example, we can take this arrow and we can drag this down. Oops. 
and you can see like things are becoming brighter but especially you can see like these things are really really becoming bright they be actually we losing definition here because we are basically all the pix pixels that are right from the arrow we just moved uh, are redefined as being like just completely white and everything else is scaled accordingly and you can do the same thing with the black. We can just move it up here. And we're starting to lose a lot of things just in the, in the darkness because like everything that is left from this arrow is basically redefined as being black and everything else is scaled accordingly. So actually this distribution seems pretty, pretty, pretty okay here. I'm gonna move the white arrow a little bit down um, because uh, there is basically no uh, really, really w bright pixels here anyway, so I can just move this down anyway. Uh, I'm gonna actually fast forward to a place where we see some cards so we can see what kind of brightness levels we have to focus on. All right, so we see that if we move the arrow two uh, down to around here, we completely won't be able to see uh, any kind of details on the cards. And that's the thing that we're actually focusing here right now. So actually, I'm not gonna change it a lot. I'm gonna actually keep the arrow here uh, at the top here. Uh, but I want to go up with a with a black because there's like a lot of details that we see here around, like the crotches of the players and stuff like that, and that's actually not very important. So we can actually move this uh, this arrow up here a little bit. You can even go uh, lose a little bit of contrast here. Uh, I mean, a little definition in blacks here because then you have also the arrow in the middle here. And if you're familiar with video games, you might be familiar with the term gamma. Uh, that is basically gamma here. So we're redefining what is the midpoint. Of, of this footage, like oh, what is the midpoint of the brightness levels. So we can use this to kind of like tweak things in afterwards. All right, and that seems kind of fine. Uh, we kind of have um, the focus is more now on uh, the actual cards themselves and less on, on the surrounding. We kind of like the, these things are coming, coming, going to background and we're just making sure that those cards are readable, that you kind of see some definition in the cards that you can actually, you know, they can recognize there is some text on those cards uh, that those cards are readable. So this is basically the second step. We're moving now on to the third step, which is going to be color correction. Uh, we're going to make sure that there is no color tint uh, in the footage, there's no color bias. So again, we're gonna go to the uh, to the effects controls window, and we're gonna add. Let me look real quick. Color balance, not the HLS color balance, the regular color balance. And again, you can use this as a search tool. Color balance. There we go. There's just two of them, and we're gonna use the one that has no uh, HLS. Um, so you here you have like red, green, and blue, and applied to like shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can use, there's sadly, there is no like beautiful graphical display here. This, these are just raw numbers and you kind of have to uh, play around with those numbers to see what is going on. But basically this footage is a bit too yellow. Uh, I think when I was recording this, I screwed up the color balance a little bit. So everything turned out way too yellowish. Uh, and uh, I can now uh, fix this using this interface here. Generally, my process here is regularly just go through this row of numbers and move them left and right uh, just by clicking and dragging to make sure um, and, and see you know which which change uh, seems better. So for example, here I'm just removing reds from the shadows and that seems fine. That seems actually more neutral. Uh, then we're gonna play around with the greens. That actually doesn't seem to do too much to us. So we're gonna stay at, at minus two. Um, the yellows here, I think we're gonna move a little bit, remove a little bit of yellows. And then we're gonna move to the midtones again, removing the reds. Ah, oh, that seems fine. Yes, that's something that we want to do. Uh, the greens are kind of like not really important to what we're doing. And the yellows are oh, maybe a little bit. And then continuing on to the uh, to the highlights again tweaking a little bit making sure that seem things seem neutral bringing out the blues here a little bit to get like this beautiful blue color from the play match all right so uh, if you you can always click on this fx f button here and you can always see like this was before and this is after we were successfully removed <laughs> remove basically this instagram filter that was going on here which was th this was previously this is now this seems much more neutral or more bluish and uh and uh more clear so the third 
uh, part of this process is going to be apply sharpness and that's really a very simple filter you just uh, click on sharpen which is here and I'm gonna drag oops uh, there we go sharpen on here and again you can look for this if you go in blur sharpen sharpen there is the filter it's basically the same one and that's like a very simple filter to use it just increase it to get more sharpness uh, so now we are at 40 that seems kind of fine I'm gonna zoom in to see uh, how it gets applied to everything yes you can see if you if I turn this off it's a bit smudged and if I increase the sharpness it looks a little bit better uh, one side effect of the sharpness filter is that um, things will get, get start really funky if you overdo it so you know you get start like this neon uh, glowy effect everything gets like those weird borders and of course it will also do bad things to your grain in your footage it will increase the grain so don't overdo it I like to keep it at 40 it kind of depends on what kind of footage you have if your footage is more blurry then you can go all the way to 90 or so but this footage seems to be doing fine with just 40 so this is basically the entire process again if we turn off all the effects and you see this is the way the footage looked before we started and now if we turn everything on this is the way it looks like like now at least as you can tell it's much more crisper much more sharper much more pleasant to watch and uh, you can see that there is a lot of quality uh, image quality hidden in the footage we just needed to apply a couple of simple effects so now we are in Premiere and I'm gonna try to apply the same effect in Premiere. Premiere is made is a program made for more for editing, for editing of long footage and basically all of my projects end up in Premiere. This is where I do the finishing touches, the actual editing. I usually use the After Effects as a first step to clean up the video footage and then you work um, continue working with Premiere. But you can also use uh, apply all those effects in Premiere, albeit not quite as uh, it's not quite as comfortable as in After Effects. I'm going to show you what I mean in a second here. Premiere has a bit different of a workflow. You can't just open like an empty project, or at least you have to like create a project, uh, and then we kind of have to create how the podcast is fine. Uh, you kind of have to set up everything here right now. I'm not, not going to bother about any of these things. It doesn't matter really. I'm going to click OK. And now you kind of have to set like a default resolution for the entire project. You can still change it afterwards, like for individual sequences. But it makes sense to make to make sure that everything is set up correctly right now. And again, uh, this is the same thing as with the compositions and After Effects, where you kind of have to make sure the resolution is set correctly. Uh, 1920 and one. 1080 here um, and of course like the the, um, the frame rate like 29 or 97 or 30 frames per second is fine uh, it makes sense uh, to save the presets for later as I did like with my with my settings here so uh, you don't have to set it like every time you start a new project all right so we are now in the uh, empty new empty project and it's the uh, now the workflow becomes kind of similar where you just drag drop the footage that you want to have in the project this is the project window again and then you have the sequence which is basically the same thing as a composition in after effects kind of like an empty timeline and we can start dragging things onto the timeline here so this is going to be think i'm going to just drag and drag and drop here into it uh, sometimes you get these kinds of messages where it's like the clip does not match the sequence settings do you want to change settings to match the clip settings no you usually don't want to have these things because we just you know made sure that our project settings are set to the thing that we want to have 920 times 1080 and 30 frames per second turns out this clip that i just recorded i recorded in 24 frames per second because that's what my camera does so well and I don't want to continue working 24 frames per second. I want to re-encode it to 30 frames per second. Uh, and usually whenever you get like this question, it's, it's usually uh, the right way to say, keep existing settings. I don't want to change my composition to what I just dragged in. All right, so this is again, we have like work area, but this time we don't actually cut the, there is no ending. Like each sequence has, is like unlimited in length. So we just work with the work area. I just reset the work area to encompass the entire clip. And yes, so now we can apply effects just as we did in After Effects. We can, for example, click here on effect controls. Here we can drag in effects or we can actually modify the individual footage. We can modify the cropping here, for example. As you can tell, this is a bit uh, skewed, like this, this is, uh, you know, 
not quite aligned to the, the borders, not quite horizontal. And we have a lot of stuff that actually doesn't belong in the footage. So again, we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. Let me show. And we're gonna rotate like so. And we're gonna reposition this so it's centered. Maybe scale in a little bit. I think this seems to be fine. Now we're going to apply the effects. Now we can work with adjustment layers as you can in After Effects, uh, but in Premiere those are not quite as comfortable, not quite as well implemented, I think. Uh, so the way you create adjustment layers is by clicking in the project window, right clicking and creating an adjustment layer and uh, make sure it's the same size as your footage 1080p is fine now and you can drag in this adjustment layer and you can like grab the end of the adjustment layer to make sure it's the size of the entire footage so now we have like this pink adjustment layer and we can start adding effects to the actual adjustment layer now it here down here we have like an effects search window so we're going to look for levels because now we're going to look at the brightness and contrast so this is levels here we're going to drag and drop in here as you can already sell, tell this is not quite as comfortable as in premiere uh, in, as, as in after effects uh, you just have a, like a row of numbers and so that's really not cool uh, you can click up here and then you get like a histogram that we saw before but suddenly you realize that it's actually just black window and you have not not really like a good uh, histogram preview here and the problem is here that we applied the um, the levels to the adjustment layer so it just takes the histogram of the adjustment layer and just adjustment layer is just dark there's nothing on the adjustment layer so we don't really have a comfortable interface uh, the solution for this is just basically just cut it out like um, control x and apply it to the actual footage for now just to make sure we have the settings right uh, and then we can apply it and then you get like a preview and then you get kind of a bit of a histogram but still the histogram is still not very good and the preview we're getting here is is way too small to actually see anything. So again, it's not the best solutions for do, to do this in Premiere. Uh, one thing you can always do is to do this in Photoshop. Photoshop also has a levels function. And then basically take the, um, the numbers that you had from Photoshop and just paste them in here. So, uh, but we're gonna try to do this with, with, uh, with this uh, with, with the Premiere interface right now. So here we have basically an interesting challenge where we have white cards and it's very easy um, to make a mistake where you um, basically move this white arrow down so much that those white cards will just become like white rectangles. But as you can tell, that, like there's a, like a definition here. We have like a specular light on those cards and we have the actual, you know, diffuse color of, of those of those cards. And there is actually a difference between them. And we don't want to lose this difference because that means we're just basically cutting off the um, information. And we kind of also want to make those cards seem physical, seem plastic. So that's why we are actually trying to experiment with those brightness settings, trying to make sure that there's still definitions in those cards. But we're going to still uh, want to, of course, increase the contrast, making sure that everything is nice and crisp. So let me see, I'm going to experiment with this a, a little bit and let me see if I can arrive at some kind of result. So this is an example for an overexposed shot, uh, exposed shot. We see that this is, these just has become, have become white uh, squares. And uh, this is also way too much. So we're gonna go down a little bit here. And still, even though these are readable, there's, these are just still just, you know, uh, very flat and two dimensional. So we're trying to move the white arrow b b up a bit. So now we're starting to see some definition here. So now this is looking a little bit better here. Maybe a little bit even more more tiny bit uh, that's nice and uh, black levels seem to be fine as well I'm gonna see uh, that we have kind of like a nice neutral tone here this is nice so I think we're done here with levels and again I would certainly recommend especially if you're new to this to use something like Photoshop or After Effects to uh, get like a better preview better histogram to fix those things uh, so now we're going to move over now that we decided that the, these levels are correct we're going to again 
um, control X, we're gonna get them out of our actual footage and put them on the adjustment layer. I think you working with the adjustment layer is especially important in Premiere because you will start editing this footage. You will start like cutting things out and stuff like that. You know, you do, will do like something like this. And this means you will end up like with two instances of your footage, each having like its own, uh, own, uh, uh, after effects applied to them and then you get like those weird situations where you maybe want to change something in hindsight but then you will have to apply it to each individual portion of the footage that you have in your editing window so having like all of the effects applied to just one continuous layer is so much easier and something that you really really want to have all right so we have this adjustment layer here now and we have just levels applied to this we're going to look at color balance like the tint um, again the same uh it has the same effect here color balance not the hls one but the regular one it has the same controls here actually this footage seems pretty uh pretty neutral i don't think i can fix a lot with this something i sometimes like to do is to make it to, to add it a little bit red and yellows to the entire thing so it is a bit more friendly yes many cameras end up with a bit of a of a um, um, like a sterile looking, very cold looking footage, but this is actually pretty nice, pretty nice tones in here. There's really not much I can fix with this, and if it's not broken, then maybe you shouldn't be actually messing with this. Sometimes I like to look still if there's something I can do, but it seems to be pretty well balanced overall. Yeah, there's really not much I can do here. So actually I'm gonna remove the color balance and keep it, uh, keep it uh, neutral this time around. And finally, there's also the sharpness setting. And again, that works the same way it works in um, After Effects. I'm just, there's just a sharpen filter and you can just crank, crank it up. And again, 90 is too much. 40, I think, was looking nice. Um, something that's also important maybe to zoom in 100%. Uh, so you can actually see the, the individual, individual pixels. So this is the process for After Effects. And again, this is what we started out with. And this is what we have right now. As you can see, it uh, the previous footage looked a bit milky, a bit murky, and we just fixed some of the basic things here about this right now. So I am back in After Effects right now. I, wa I wanted to reiterate this process on a couple of other examples just to show you how to apply those techniques to different types of footage. Now, sadly, I don't have old footage of myself here right now so i really only using this one camera and there's just so much i can show you with one source footage so i decided to actually take footage from other people from the internet now this is going to be perhaps a bit of a controversial move so i want to make sure that there's really no misunderstanding this is no attempt for me to do any kind of sick burn to to put other people down i have the biggest respect towards the people uh, who created the footage I'm going to show you right now. So uh, this is really not meant as any type of, uh, you know, offense or anything. This is really just for educational purposes. So we can learn how to apply those techniques to different types of footage. So the first one I have here right now is from Northern Gaming Network. Uh, I'm thinking they're using a GoPro, not exactly sure. Um, I'm going to create a new composition as always. I'm going to drag and drop in this here. And you know, there's many reasons why this footage might be looking like this way. Um, uh, it's, this is actually uh, 720p footage. So as you can see, it's not filling the frame. Uh, so I'm going to actually scale it by 150%. So it fills the frame. Um, I'm going to fast forward to place where we actually see some cards on the table. I think this is a good spot here to to do some experiments with. All right, so what I see here is probably GoPro footage. It kind of looks like GoPro footage. This is something that you will see uh, when you download the footage from your GoPro. Um, and we can see that there is, again, a lot of stuff on the top here, and we see the both pl two players here, but they kind of awkwardly cut off here. So I'm going to zoom in again. I'm going to uh, make sure that we can only see the playing field uh, because everything else is a bit distracting in, in, in this situation. I'm going to actually rotate this a little bit because I think it is a bit uh, not quite level. Like so. Uh, and then we can start actually applying the effects. As you can see, this is really blurry now because we upscaled from 720p to 1080p. 
but I think there's still a lot of things that we can do about this. So we're going to create a new adjustment layer. There we go. And then we can, oh, by the way, something that we forgot previously is to set the, uh, the sequence length. We're going to do it right now. Trim composition to work area. All right. So adjustment layer, again, we're going in and we are uh, adding the levels. And as you can see, like there's a huge part of the spectrum basically that is not used. So we can just bring this arrow down all the way here and you can still see the cards. You can go, go even further and you can still, the cards are still beautiful, readable. So yeah, there's like a huge chunk of the um, basically dynamic range that hasn't been used and we just recovered. Then we can move up the, the blacks a little bit, not too much because this is a bit of a dark shot anyway. And we're going to adjust the gamma. I think we can go even further maybe and tweak the gamma a little bit. All right, so this seems fine. And we're going to now see if we can do something with color collection, color correction. There we go. Adding the color balance filter. Um, this seems pretty neutral. Um, I'm going to still play it around with the controls and see what's what's happens. All right, so this is it. Basically, not too much. Uh, I just removed some greens from the highlights. Uh, I removed some reds from the shadows. It's basically, it was pretty much uh, neutral from the get-go. Maybe I made it a bit too dark. Uh, let me see if we can fix this a little bit. All right, so this is color balance and now we're going to apply uh, the sharpen filter. And this is really the most important one because as you can see, this footage is um, it's a bit blurry. Uh, we have upscaled this again and especially GoPro footage uh, often benefits from like a healthy dose of the sharpen filter. So we apply 40, which we had previously, and we can see that this is already helping, but we can even go further to 70 or so. And we starting getting all the details that we didn't have before. This would look even better if this wasn't 720p footage, it was the original 1080p footage. I'm assuming this was recorded in 1080p. My YouTube downloader just didn't do better than 720. Uh, so yeah, so this looks much better now. And again, uh, let me see when we can fix the levels a little bit because they seem, still seem a bit dark. Maybe we can go down with this. Yes, I think we can. There's still a bit more to, get, to, be, to be gained from this. All right, and again, uh, this is uh, what we had before. And this is how it looks right now. So you can, you can see like a massive improvement here and a uh, very easy way to get more out of your GoPro footage. So now I'm going to be using some footage from um, Netrunner with Scott Preci on YouTube. Uh, again, I downloaded something in 720p, so this is not the original resolution. I'm still going to create a new composition, drag in the footage, adjust the length of the layer. Uh, trim comp to work area and I'm gonna of course make sure it fills the frame um, by making it 150% size. So this is actually really nice, some really nice footage. I know that Scott is using some really sweet cameras uh, and you can tell that, that this is much cleaner than you get something you get from a GoPro but still you can still tweak this a little bit. I'm not, I'm not sure if um, Scott is actually uh, doing any post-processing on his on his footage and even though he has such an awesome camera I think we can still get a tiny bit more out of out of this footage. So again, we're gonna apply uh, I think the positioning is perfect here I'm not I don't think I can fix anything through like cropping and resizing things So I'm gonna actually immediately create an adjustment layer and I'm gonna add the levels filter and as you can see, like uh, again, this is this is actually a, a bit dark, and we're not using the full um, dynamic range. So we can move down the yellow arrow, uh, the white arrow here, and you can see that we get a much better footage here right now. Uh, I would maybe uh, wouldn't move the black up because Scott is using a black mat, a play mat here, and we kind of like when we start removing the black arrow, we start losing definition in this black mat. It just becomes again like a two-dimensional. Uh, a square or rectangle in this case. So uh, you always want to make sure that that, um, that the kind of things that you're depicting, the things that are important, that there is at least a bit of definition there so they seem like plastical 3D objects. 
Uh, and again, I'm going to tweak down the midpoint here. I think we can bring it a bit down here. So maybe we can still move the blacks a bit up. Uh, but yeah, that seems kind of nice. Uh, again, I'm not going to actually even attempt doing a color correction here because this seems perfect. Uh, but I will add a sharpness filter because again, this is a bit unsharp. Uh, we have downloaded this from the internet. So we can uh, always uh, increase things a lot by adding sharpen. I'm going to start with 40, which I always use for my videos. It seems fine. Uh, I think we're going to go to 60. That's uh, still okay. So yeah, 67. That's really, really nice. So as you can see, like this is uh, footage from Ray, a very, very high quality camera. Uh, and you can still get a tiny bit of quality if you tweak around with the settings a little bit. So this is going a bit for today. These are some very, very simple tricks and tips on how to get a bit more quality out of your footage, how to get the best out of the footage that you recorded. If you have any tips and tricks yourself, how to how to um, you know increase the quality out of footage like this, then certainly post it in the comments. Otherwise, we will be back next time around. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs>